Today's the third in the series that we called Simple. Simple is the process that we have embraced and developed at Vertical Church to see believers transformed into the image of Christ. In other words, it's how we walk people through the stages of spiritual growth. In essence, you and I need to understand that God has a plan and a purpose that he works out in our lives and he transforms us, he changes us through that end. And we recognize as we've been talking through this series because this is the heartbeat of who we are and what we do at Vertical Church and why we do what we do. Because God's intention is to mature, to grow us into the image of Christ. And as we talked about last week, there's not one thing that God does that grows us. There's multiple things that work together to see God's purpose. You see, discipleship, really, in essence, what we're talking about, this is our discipleship model. And that's why success for us at Vertical Church is moving people from where they are to where God wants them to be. Because being a follower, that's the way we like to call it, implies consistent movement. Discipleship is a journey. It's a movement, it's a progression of growing and maturing to be all that God designed and created you to be. And so as we go through it, we realize there are four things we do as a church. You hear about three of them every week when we talk about it. The four things we do as a church, we inspire love for God through our weekend celebrations. We develop life-giving relationships through our small group, and we discover our redemptive purpose through our growth track because we empower people to fulfill his purpose through our dream team. See, one of them is a means to an end. There are three lifelong pursuits that each of us must do. Because becoming a mature follower of Christ, God has multiple things that he's doing in us to create maturity. It's kind of like this. It's like I mentioned last week. It's like this stool. There are three legs to the stool. This stool, to have balance, to have stability and strength, all three legs are essential. And that's why it's important that as a follower of Christ, that we attend services regularly so that our hearts are inspired with our love for God as we worship him corporately, as we are inspired through relevant teaching. But also we recognize as we were talking about it last week, we need one another. That's why our small groups exist because that's how people get free. That's how people minister one to another and growth is, is essential that the body is connected together in every part doing its work helps one another. And so we're going to talk about the one today that connects with the other. And as I said, we need all three parts because if you remove one part, it's not strong enough or stable enough to stand. We need to understand all three realities. So today we're going to talk about our growth track. Like I said, it's a means to an end because it goes directly with what we're going to talk about next week. Because before you can fulfill ministry before you can enter God's dream team. It is absolutely essential that you discover what God created and ordained for you to do, that you recognize what your purpose is. And so if you're taking notes this this morning, listen carefully, follow along with me. Listen, until purpose is discovered, existence has no meaning. Until purpose is discovered, existence existence has no meaning, for purpose is the source of fulfillment. Until purpose is discovered, existence has no meaning, for purpose is the source of fulfillment. It is why so many people go to work every day, but yet inside, although they're grateful for the income that they earn, for the benefits that it provides them, Often it doesn't go deep enough to create any sense of satisfaction. It's not, it doesn't go deep enough to satisfy the soul. Because until you discover your purpose, you will never find satisfaction for your soul. So what is purpose? What is purpose? If you're taking notes, listen. Purpose is the original intent for the creation of a thing. Purpose is the original intent for the creation of a thing and the expectation of its creator. 
purpose is the original intent by something was created and the expectation that whoever created it would do. And you and I need to recognize that God is a God of purpose. God created each and every one of us. And therefore, there is a purpose for our lives. Never buy into the lie that somehow you were an accident, that somehow you didn't deserve to be here. Whether or not your parents were excited upon your arrival or not, you are not an accident. You are the divine purpose and creation of Almighty God. Because no matter how the circumstances are that brought you into this world, God has a focus. He has a purpose and an intention for you. Because God is the master creator. He has created each and every one of us with a design, a purpose in mind. You see, everything that's created, the person that created it had a reason for creating it. And there is a reason that you exist. God has a purpose for your life. But until you discover that, life really doesn't make any sense. Life really doesn't have any meaning. And we need to understand this, that even if you're ignorant of purpose, it doesn't cancel your purpose. It doesn't mean your purpose doesn't exist. See, God expects us to discover it. God expects us to begin to do, to, to look into and find out because God wants to reveal it to us. Because listen to me, wherever purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Do you hear me? Whenever purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Because abuse is something being used for something other than what it was created to do. Have you, any of you, I, I've done this, have you, any of you ever tried to nail a nail in the wall with a shoe? <coughs> Anybody ever done that? I mean, I don't think the person who created a shoe ever had that in mind. I don't think that's why they put a heel on the bottom of it, okay? And although you might be able to achieve it to a degree, it's not what it's created for. Or how many of you ever used a butter knife to unscrew something? Okay, that's not what it was created to do. See, whenever purpose is unknown, abuse is inevitable. And you and I need to recognize God created us with a sense of purpose. There is something significant, something important to which God created us to understand. And that's why it's important because listen to me. If you want to know what the purpose of a thing is, never ask the thing. If you want to know what the purpose of a thing is, you never ask the thing. Because purpose is found only in the mind of the creator. Purpose is found only in the mind of the creator. The reason for which it exists. And that's why purpose is the sense and source of fulfillment. Because until you're doing what you were created to do, life will never really have any satisfaction. It will really never have any true meaning. It will never have any sense of satisfying our soul's longings. God created us. And here's the deal that you need to understand. God made each and every one of us. We were created by God. And more importantly, we were created for God. God had something in mind when he created us. And listen, all of creation was created to show forth the glory of God. To show forth the glory of God. What is glory? Glory is everything that makes God, God. It is his character. It is his nature. It is his power. And when we are in the place doing what we were created to do, we glorify God. We show the beauty, the diversity, the creativity, and the awesomeness of our creator. God created us for his glory. And that's important that we understand. And in fact, if you have a Bible, turn over to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, chapter 4. If you're new to Bible reading, just find the end of the book and take a left. The last book of the Bible is Revelation, and we're going to go to Revelation 4 because you and I need to understand that every one of us, that God created us. We were no accident. We were the purposeful handiwork of the Almighty. We have the signature of God upon us, and you and I are created, listen, with the responsibility to reflect, to honor, and to live 
for the glory of God. We were created for this reason. And so listen to this in Revelations 4.11. It says this. You are worthy, O Lord, and God to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. You see, in creation, there's only two created classes, only two created beings that did not bring glory to God. The first one are fallen angels. Referred to in in the Bible sometimes as demons or evil spirits. See, they were created to reflect the glory of God, but they rebelled against God. They attempted to to, 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 uh, um, create a coup against God and his authority. And they fell from that place. And the other created being that does not often bring glory to God is humanity. It's people. Because we don't live. Because you and I need to understand we were created for the glory of God. I love it in, the, in Revelations 4.11, the old King James language says it this way, for thou, O Lord, are worthy to receive glory and honor and praise, for thou hast created all things created and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Anybody ever see, there's an older movie, I used to love it years ago, the movie Chariots of Fire, that they kind of detailed the story, specifically Eric um, Little, Eric Little, the great runner from Scotland. They said he was beautiful to watch. He was the most graceful, the most awesome runner. And he was from Scotland, and he was going to represent Great Britain in the Olympic Games. Although Chariots of Fire was about different people, I remember this line from the movie, which was so powerful. He said, when I run, I sense the pleasure of God. You see, when anything is doing what it was created to do, it brings pleasure not only to God, but it brings pleasure to our own hearts. When we do what we were created to do, you and I were created to glorify God. In fact, if you're taking notes, follow me. We were created to glorify God. You and I, we were created to glorify God. Our highest ideal, our greatest achievement is to live for the glory of God. And anybody who has set out to do that, anyone who is living for the glory of God senses inside of them a satisfaction and a soul joy that there is nothing to compare to. There is nothing more exciting. There is nothing more fulfilling than when we are doing what God created us to do. When we would sense and understand that God would actually work through our lives to influence, to help, and to touch the lives of others. We give glory to God, and we experience a sense of satisfaction that there's no comparison to. Isaiah 43 and 7 says this, bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. If we claim that God is our Father, we must recognize we were created for his glory. It was I who created them, the the Lord said. So therefore, the heart desires to live for the glory of God. Because listen, if you're taking notes, listen. When anything in creation fulfills its purpose, it brings glory to God. When anything in creation fulfills its purpose, it gives glory to God. In other words, how does a bird glorify God? When it makes nests, when it chirps, when it flies, it gives glory to God because it is doing what it was created to do. When a fish swims in the water, when a fish goes through all the deal that a fish does, when it's doing that, it gives glory to God. When the sun shines, it gives glory to God. Anything created brings glory to God when it is doing what it was created to do. And that's why you and I need to understand, we were created for the glory of God. And we will not glorify God until we do what we were created to do. Now, I need all of your attention for a moment because, listen, this is so critical. We need to understand the purpose of redemption. 
In other words, you hear us talk about it at Vertical Church. We say your redemptive purpose. What are we talking about? You see, sin messed it all up. You see, mankind was created in the image and likeness of God. God had allowed mankind to be his partner in working in the earth to fulfill his purpose for this place. Man was made like none of the other creations of God and was given authority, was given dignity, was given purpose, and God allowed him to be able to reflect his glory by bringing to pass God's purposes in the earth. But yet what happened? We know the beginning of the story tells us that man sinned. And therefore, because of man's sin, he brought hurt, he brought chaos, he brought a, 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 a distress to the earth. Mankind brought about tragedy and heartache. And all of this came as a result of us not doing what we were created to do. But that's not the end of the story. The entire Bible is a story of God redeeming the purpose to which he created humanity. See, God felt that it was so important that he would invest everything, that he would work, would work tirelessly year after year, age after age, all to bring to pass, bringing his son into the earth. And why did Jesus come into this earth? To restore the purpose for which you and I were created. To give us each the opportunity to be able to, be, uh, to fulfill our destiny. To be able to do what we were created to do. Our redemptive purpose is all that God went through to provide the opportunity for you and I to be able to have the chance to live out our purpose. And what? Glorify God. That's why Jesus came. All of that was essential. And so listen, if you're taking notes, listen, listen, listen. I put the word redeem in your notes. The word redeem literally means to buy back, to pay off, to recover by payment or other redress or satisfaction. Listen, God went through all of this to give each of us the opportunity. See, the redemptive purpose is that God saved us and redeemed us. Why? So that we could just sit in this building week after week and listen to a message and go home? Is that what all of this was about? See, people get frustrated in their Christianity because if all it is is just coming here and thanking God that he saved us, that he cleansed us, and we're waiting to go to heaven, no, God redeemed us because he has something for each and every one of us to do. And until we're doing what we were created to do, we will not glorify God. God has a purpose for our lives. So listen, if you're taking notes, God redeemed us to restore his purpose and invite us to work together with him to reclaim and fix a broken planet. God redeemed us to restore his purpose and invite us to work together with him to reclaim and fix a broken planet. In other words, God gives each and every one of us the opportunity to join together with him. That God says, listen, I want to do something through your life so significant that I really I'm not satisfied until I have it all, till I understand all that I created you to do. That's what I desire, is that you fulfill the purpose that I created. So God invites every one of us. See, in your mind, you may have reasons and rationales as to why you can't, why God won't, but all of that is not true. God has a unique and special purpose to which he has ordained for you. Something that nobody else can do like the way you can do it. And God is intended to invite every one of us to this ability of working together with him in redeeming, restoring, and reclaiming this broken planet. See, God wants our lives to sense that part of satisfaction that we know that we are living for the purpose to which we were created. And so in redemptive purpose, turn here, this scripture is so important, but listen to this. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, because this sums up God's redemptive purpose. Listen, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, we're going to read it out of the New Living Translation, but listen to me. It says this, it says, for we are God's masterpiece. 
You see, you are a masterpiece. You are an original. You are a one and only. You see, you and I need to recognize that God has a unique signature on each and every one of our lives. And see, until you have a biblical mindset, what ends up happening in frustrating people is we attempt to be like somebody else. We attempt to become a carbon copy, and carbon copies are a dime a dozen. But there is nothing like an original. And you are unique. You are specific. You are a masterpiece. God designed you, and you are his signature. He has something unique that he designed for you. For he said what? For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. You see, God created you anew in Christ. You are a masterpiece. So you need to believe that end of it. You see, when you look in the mirror, that's the wonder, that's the beauty of God. God is so diverse in his creativity. Did you ever notice that? God doesn't make things the same. Because if everything was the same, wouldn't it be boring? Think about it. Do you like to eat the exact same thing every day? If all you had to eat was just raw broccoli, yeah, it may kind of satisfy to a degree if you like broccoli, but listen, don't you love diversity when you eat? Aren't you glad there are so many different things and the ability? God is absolutely beautiful in his diversity. And when we come down to it, every one of us are unique. Every one of us are a masterpiece. Don't you love it? It's the time of year, all the flowers and the things are blooming outside. Don't you love that God has so much variety, so much creativity? And when you look at it, you go, glory to God. Man, that is beautiful. Aren't you glad it's just not all green when you look outside? That God spots it with color. He makes all of these wonderful diversities. Think about all of creation. There are like millions of different kinds of bugs alone. Just think about a beetle, how many varieties of beetles there are. See, God makes each of us unique. God makes each of us special. God makes each of us. Nobody else is like you, and nobody can do exactly what God has given you the ability to do. Therefore, why do you want to be like somebody else? Why do you model your life to try to aspire to be what somebody else is when you need to understand that the truth is God? has such immense beauty and what he will do through your life when you understand that you are a masterpiece. You were created by God. He has a unique plan. Because why? Isn't it wonderful? This kind of blows my mind, but there are no two snowflakes that are alike, right? God is absolutely unlimited in his creativity. And so why is it we as people, when it comes to that end, that we get scared of what's different from us? Why is it that when we come together as people, that often we don't see beauty and diversity? But you see, you you need to understand, I told you the the vision of Vertical Church. You see, we see a multicultural, multi-generational, life-giving church that welcomes unchurched people. And you see, we are multicultural for a reason because we believe it reflects the glory of God. We have the opportunity to get ready for heaven because God doesn't look like the diversity of people is a problem. He sees that as beauty. He sees that as wonder. He sees that as glory. And that's why, you know, not disparaging other churches, but you know what? When folks just hang out with everybody who looks like them, talks like them, acts like them, to me, that's kind of boring. But you see, I believe this place reflects the glory of God. Multicultural. That's what we see. You see, it's not just Caucasian. It's not just African American. It's Asian. It's, it's, it's Hispanic. It's all of it combined together reflects the beauty of God. Because guess what? When we get to heaven, there's not, there's not an African American section. There's not a Caucasian section. There's not an Asian section, although I'm kind of bumming because I love Asian food. But you know what? The bottom line is this. God sees all of that as the beauty of it. And you need to recognize 
God made you unique. You were created for his glory. So again, if you're taking notes, listen to me, listen. God made each of us as a masterpiece because we are all unique. Listen to the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12 says this. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. You see, God's plan, God's intention is that you and I would all come together, each of us in our uniqueness, each of us in the variedness of what God created and gifted us to do and unite to become something so spectacular. It's called the body of Christ. Aren't you glad that your lungs don't try to do what your heart can only do? Then why do we come to church and have such a narrow focus of what it means? to serve God, and to be who God created us to be. No, you need to be who God created you to be. You need to discover your redemptive purpose and do what God intended and created you to do because Jesus needs you. You're essential. You're a part of the plan. God needs everything you can do because if we're going to be a healthy body, then all the parts working together work to build God's plan. That's why we say here at Vertical Church that every member is a minister. Every member is a minister. In other words, we've all been called to serve others. See, to minister to people means to serve them. And all of us have been called to serve others. Every one of us. Because if we are a body, then we need all of the parts of the body. There is no unimportant, un, 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 unneeded parts. All of it has a purpose from God, and all of it plays an essential role in God living out and showing forth his glory through what we call the church, the body of Christ. And that's why we tell everybody, every member is a minister. And therefore, we also recognize every task is important. So whether somebody is parking cars in the parking lot, whether someone is ushering, whether someone is rocking babies back there, or whether someone is out serving in a soup kitchen or doing whatever God created them to do, all of the parts work together. There is no task that is not important. Every task is important. And that's why we say this, every member is a 10 somewhere. In other words, there's something you can do like nobody else. There is some, when you ever see people in their giftings, isn't it a beautiful thing? You, you stand there amazed. You stand there going, oh my goodness. I, do you ever watch that? You ever watch someone that just does something and just it's so natural, they do it so easy? It's kind of like you go over the Alquist home and you watch Karen uh, Alquist turn nothing into the most beautiful, sumptuous meal that you could ever imagine. And you go, how did you do that? I, oh my goodness, I gained him 50 pounds just looking at that. Oh my goodness. But you see, when you watch someone do what they were created to do, it brings glory to God, and it is a beauty to watch. And that's why we need to respect and honor the diversity of who God made us to be. You see, all of our different gifts, whether you have a gift of hospitality, you know how desperately that's needed in our days? All of the gifts of God are essential and important. And so listen, if you're taking notes, God equips his masterpiece. You are a masterpiece, do you understand that? I, I think you need a little help on this one. Say that with me. I am a masterpiece. Say it again with me. I am a masterpiece. You see, God made you a masterpiece, and he also equipped you to do what he called and, and created you to do. You see, in Christ, we are complete in him. We have everything that we need. God has given us all that we need. In fact, one of the things that talks people out of it, people say, well, you know what? You don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know the things. Why would I think God would want to use me? But you need to recognize that if you have come to know Jesus Christ, the Bible said that anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. God wiped it all out. God restored the purpose. God has meaning. And he has something unique, significant, important for every single one of us to do. And our life will never sense the satisfaction of heaven 
until we're doing what we were created to do. God equips us. You see, in Christ, the Bible says, I was crucified with Christ, but nevertheless I live. But not I, but Christ lives in me. You need to recognize if we are the body of Christ, that means Christ lives in us. Every time we operate and minister as of the parts of the body of Christ, it's Jesus ministering through us. It's Jesus in us, working through us to fulfill the plan to which we were created to do. All of us were created by God with a purpose and an intention because God made us that way. In fact, some of the times that you have to crucify your life, in other words, your excuses and reasons for not to, is to recognize back to this. He said, for I was crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but not I. Christ lives in me for the life I now live. I live by faith in the Son of God. You need to believe in the one in you. You need to believe in what he's done through you. You need to believe in the reality of what heaven accomplished on your behalf and who you have become in him. Don't inhibit Christ from being able to express himself through you because he will express himself through you in such unique and wonderful ways beyond what you need. See, you can't look at it. God doesn't want you to be like anybody else. You look up here, you say, you know what? I want to be like Pastor Ken. No, trust me, you don't need another one of these. I'm enough work in progress, okay? You don't need, I, I, ask my wife, you don't want another one of these, okay? Thank God for his grace. But listen, you need to just simply be who you are. You need to be who God created you. God has equipped you in Christ. Now to be, because why the Bible says, I can do all things, how? Through Christ who strengthens me. We live out the purpose of God through the greater one who is in us. And so in essence, we can be who God called us to be. We can give glory to God because in Christ, I can do all things. God equips his masterpiece. Everything you need. God has left at your disposal. That's why it thrills our hearts when people discover their giftings and begin to mature those and develop in those. There's no greater. See, that's why we say we help people discover the redemptive purpose and then we empower them to fulfill his purpose through our dream team. You see, it is our heart's desire to see people because why? What is our growth track? Our growth trap is four simple steps. Our growth track the first Sunday of every month, Church 101, is that we give people the opportunity to partner together with us through membership. Everybody needs a home. Everybody needs a place where God will use their gifts to be able to express his glory. And so we provide the opportunity for people to know if vertical church is the place that God has designed them to be, Church 101 helps them to understand who we are so that they can join together with us. Then on the second Sunday of every month is Essentials 201, where we go over the essential uh, uh, disciplines necessary for having a lifelong relationship with Jesus Christ. There are parts of it, so whether we've been following for a year or whether we've been following for 20 years, the fact of the matter is, or if we've been only following for a week, we all need to learn the essentials or be reminded of the essentials of how we be a follower of Jesus through the disciplines of our lives. But then we come to the third week, which is today. The third week is always what? Discovery 301. In Discovery 301, people take three tests. They discover what is their personality. They discover what are their spiritual gifts, and they discover what are their passions, because we believe where the three of those intersect is that sweet spot. It's their best fit in ministry. So we begin the process. People say, well, what happens if I don't discover it in that one week? Then keep working with us because sometimes you work at this, you try this. If this ain't it, then we keep working through until we discover what are we good at? What are we unique at? We continue to help people because we work with opportunity after opportunity to say, we, our job is to help you discover what you were created to do and empower you to go do it. To live your dream. To be who God called you to be. Because why? Week four is, is what? Dream Team 401. Dream Team 401, we plug people into ministry. Some people look at us and go, what are you, crazy? Four weeks and you plug people into ministry? Sure. Because we took a page out of Jesus' book. 
We discovered this. Jesus called his followers and immediately gave them responsibilities to do. That it wasn't at the end of three and a half years that his followers began to do things. No, the Bible tells us, in fact, when you read the Gospel of John, you read that. The Bible said one of the controversies that arose around Jesus almost immediately was that Jesus was baptizing more people than John the Baptist. And then it went on to say, but Jesus himself wasn't baptizing, but his followers. John the Baptist was arrested by Herod maybe a year, year and a half into Jesus' ministry. So this is at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. Right when he called his followers, immediately he gave them things to do. Immediately he put them in. And so we took a page out of his book because we discovered this. It's better to get people started from the beginning because you will never mature. You will never be who God called you to be until you're serving others with the gifts that God has placed inside of you. And we discovered it's far easier to start people off on that journey right from the beginning serving people than trying to convince people who've been sitting in seats for months, years, decades, centuries. It's easier to start them out from the beginning and get them going. But here's my encouragement to you. No matter where you're at in this, are you living out your purpose? Are you serving the glory of God. Are you doing what God called and created you to do? Because why? Last point. Listen, listen, listen. Or actually, next to last. Not only does God equip his masterpiece, God employs his masterpiece. In other words, God has something for every one of us to do. We are, a, we are as it says again, we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so that what? So that we can sit there week after week and listen to a message? So we can go our way and say, I'm a Christian? No, God created us anew in Christ Jesus. Why? So we can do good things he planned for us long ago. In other words, God has something that he's designed for you to do. God employs his masterpiece. God has something that he's called for you to do. In fact, if we have a mindset towards eternity, we recognize God is going to each and ask each and every one of us, if heaven is our destination point, when we get there, the simple question is, did you do what I called you to do? Did you honor my glory by being who I created you to be? God employs it. Listen to this. Titus 1 or 2.14 says this. Who gave himself, speaking of Jesus, he gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness, to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. See, you are God's treasure. You are God, God is vested in you. God has given you, each and every one of you, gifts. Because listen to this, in 1 Peter 4, 10, it says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. You see, you say, oh, I haven't been given any gifts from God. Yes, you have. You just haven't discovered it. Every single one of us have been given gifts by God. And it's when you discover those gifts and use those gifts that you bring glory to God. You see, sometimes people have barriers in their way. It's like Bonnie Baccarosa shared a story with me when she told me the way I was raised, the home that I was brought up in, in the dysfunction that it would, I never would have dreamed in a million years that children's ministry would be something I would do. In fact, if I had ever heard that call, if someone had ever shown me that, I would have said no. But because someone else encouraged her, because she began to do it, if you've ever seen Bonnie back with, 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 nursery, with nursery kids, with toddlers back in that room, it is absolutely a gift that is breathtaking. It is so wonderful to behold. And you and I, when we do our part, it's like a duck swimming in water. We were all created to do something unique and special by God. And God holds each of us responsible to not only discover our gifts, but to use them to build his church, to use them to bring his glory to the earth, to use them to see his purposes done. So listen, last one, if you're taking notes, listen, your life is evidence that this generation needs something that your life contains. See, just the fact that you sit there today, sitting in a seat, 
is evidence. It is proof that your life has something that this generation needs. Every one of you have something that God is waiting on. God can't do without. You are unique. God wants to do things through you. And your life is the proof that God created because God doesn't do anything happenstance wise. God does everything for a purpose. Your life is born with a purpose, and you and I need to discover it and do what we were created to do because when we do what we were created to do, we glorify God. So let me ask you a question. Are you living for the glory of God? Are you fulfilling God's purpose for your life? Do you know God's purpose? Do you know your redemptive purpose? Here's a big one for you. Have you gone through our growth track? Have you gone through our growth track? And if not, why? You see, too often people became frustrated. Even good-natured, good-hearted people. See, to understand the heartbeat of vertical church, you need to understand this. Listen to me. People served for years just because they were good-natured and they wanted to do it. But if they were honest, they hated doing what they were asked to do. Because why? We used to be a very needs-based ministry. We need people. We need you to do this. We need you to do that. So good people would say, all right, I'll do it. But we discovered that that wasn't God's plan. So we shifted. We are a gift-based ministry. In other words, we want to help people discover what God gifted them to do and empower them to do it. You see, what happens if we don't have enough to meet the need? Then we say, God, you got to send it, and we won't do it until we have the people who are well qualified and able to do it, because we don't want people being abused, not doing what they weren't created to do. But we all need to recognize we were created with God with specific gifts and abilities, and we all need to be a part of what God is doing on the earth. God has something essential. God has something important. God has something unique for each and every one of us to do. So the question is, Why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you living for the glory of God? Take the first step. Begin the journey. Your life will never have a greater sense of purpose and meaning until you're doing what God has called, ordained, and set you out to do. Till you're helping God to do what he is doing in the earth because he needs each and every one of us to get the job done. Amen.